May adlaw na tong tanan. Do you want to supercharge your stroke recovery? If you do, then this video might help you. Hi, I'm Nathan. I'm your occupational therapist, and my goal is to help you be more consistent with your therapy at home. Disclaimer, before we start this type of therapy, you need to meet a few criteria. First, you need to be medically stable, meaning there is no other complications, like your vital signs are stable. Number two, you need to be able to uh, extend your wrist 10 degrees, all right, and extend your fingers 10 degrees, so some type of movement, and your uh, thumb needs to extend 10 degrees too. Now, you don't have to be in a neutral position to get that 10 degrees. You can be maximally flexed like that, so extension, finger extension, and thumb extension, okay? And then, the most important thing, you need to be motivated to recover from your stroke. So what is this type of stroke therapy that will supercharge recovery? This is what you call constraint-induced therapy. So what is that? It is a type of therapy that is used after a stroke or traumatic brain injury or any type of injury that will affect your brain. This is used to rewire your brain by forcibly constraining the good side. So for this video, my good side will be my right side. My stroke arm will be my left arm. So by the name itself, which is constraint, you need to constrain the activity or the movement of your good arm, which is my right arm, right? So constraining your good arm for the movements. So all you need is maybe a kitchen mitt or a sock. Make sure it is a clean sock, okay? So you need to put your arm through the kitchen mitt so my left arm can't move, right? So I think it should be easy for you to put it in, right? With the sock, you might need somebody to help you, but let's see if I can do it. It is difficult, but I think I can do it. There you go. So you need a type of constraint where your good arm cannot help in the test that you will be doing in this type of therapy. So why is it important to constrain the good arm? It is so that we are bringing down the activity of that side of the brain that controls a good arm and activate the side of the brain that controls your bad arm or your stroke arm. We need to pick up activities that of your interest or that will help you achieve your goals. Like if you want to be able to brush your hair, we will practice picking up a hairbrush. Or if you want to be able to feed yourself, we'll practice picking up a spoon or a fork or maybe a coffee mug if you enjoy drinking coffee or tea. Or if you want to be able to dress yourself again, we will practice picking up um, a piece of clothing or even just folding washcloths, right? So prepare those items and then you also need a way to record this. So you, you need to record your progress so that you will keep being motivated in doing this type of therapy. Trust me, this works. So you need to write down your progress, get you a pen and paper, okay? Now, how long do you need to do each activity? It ranges from 30 to two minutes. And how long do you need to wear your kitchen mitt or your constraint during the day? It will be about 90% of your waking hours. So you can remove the mitt um, during dressing, toileting, or eating, and when you are sleeping. So let's try to do a few activities using constraint-induced movement therapy. So wear your kitchen mitt. Again, you will be, you are not allowed to use your good arm in doing the activities, even helping or stabilizing the things that you want to pick up, right? So let's start with an easy one, like picking up cups because these are very, very light. So if your arm is still very weak, you can slide that arm and just pick it up like that. Slide it forward, then slide it back. You can also slide it side to side. Do this between 30 to two minutes, 30 seconds to two minutes, okay? So side to side, 
like that or forward and back now to progress this you can try to reach forward further and bring it back okay or bring it side to side even further okay now if that gets too easy then start picking it up okay pick it up and put it on another cup on top of another cup get another cup put it over those two cups and so on okay just like that now you also want to be able to drink from a water bottle or if you have those refillable water containers then you need to practice that too right so try to pick it up this one is full you can start with a bottle that is empty okay so just pick it up and try to bring it up to your mouth okay pick it up and try to bring it to your mouth try to count how many times you're able to pick it up in two minutes all right or how fast can you pick it up hold and bring it to your mouth try to time it so you need maybe a watch or your wall clock to time it okay or set up your alarm or your timer okay so just pick up a water bottle start with empty if your arm is still very weak all right next will be a coffee mug okay so this time you might need more fine motor coordination so you need to bring your fingers through and try to pick it up if you can't bring it to your mouth but think about bringing that mug to your mouth okay but if you can't do it yet just bring it back down all right record your progress see you can also measure how far you can bring it up from the table or pick it up from the table right now as you progress you should be able to pick it up further like this again consistency is the key okay i forgot to mention this but you also need to pass one more test before you can qualify for constraint induced therapy you should be able to pick up a toilet paper all right and then release it or a washcloth all right you should be able to pick up a washcloth with your bad arm it don't matter how you're going to pick it up or let it go for as long as you're able to do it give yourself a few tries don't worry there's no limit in trying okay so you should be able to pick up a toilet paper or a washcloth all right no matter how you do it for as long as you're able to pick it up okay so you need to pass that test first now let's do activities that you usually do in the bathroom like grooming so let's try to hold or reach for a hairbrush so first let's practice reaching if you don't have good strength yet so reaching for it holding and picking it up from the table and bring it down okay so you can do this for two minutes and count how many times you can do this all right reaching holding and picking it up now if that is easy already and you have good strength practice bringing it up to your head now if you don't have good strength yet to really bring it up to your head just pick it up higher from the table okay but think about bringing it up to your head because that will activate that part of your brain all right so do that all right so next would be like when you need to use a toilet paper so practice using or pick um practice getting toilet paper from a toilet paper roll all right now if this is too hard or too difficult for you practice with a thicker one which is a paper towel right then practice just holding it first and pulling all right so practice that 
So these are the things that you can do for your bathroom tasks. I think you understand now the concept of constraint-induced therapy. So here are other things that I suggest that you can do at home, right? So like if you want to be able to pick up a bottle cap, so practice with a larger bottle cap first, all right? So practice picking it up, holding, reaching, holding, and picking it up and letting go, okay? Just like that. Now, if that gets too easy, you can also just reach for it, hold, and then put it on top of that bottle, all right? And then bring it back down, repeat, all right? So that's one. You can also use a ball. This one's one of the easier ones too because our hand is designed to reach for a spherical object. So picking it up and putting it maybe on a container, bring it back, okay? Count how many times you can do this in two minutes or how fast you can do this, all right? Other things would be picking up a pen or straw, picking up pens, whoops, wrong cap, all right, picking up pens and putting it in a container. If you are still having a hard time, just take your time and time yourself, all right? And put it on a, in a container, all right? Just be patient. You will see your progress recorded. You'll be happy to see your progress, okay? Another one will be picking up coins. If you have better fine motor coordination, practice picking up coins. All right, it don't matter how you're doing it for as long as you're practicing consistently. Pick up coins and put it in a container or a piggy bank, all right? Just like that. Like I said, it don't matter how you do it, you will progress quickly if you are just being consistent. Okay, just like that. Right, another one would be, like I said, you want to be able to feed yourself, picking up a spoon or a fork. Again, have that intention of really using it and try to bring it up to your mouth and putting it down, okay? Bring it up to your mouth and bring it down, all right? So that's another one, we're done with that ball. Picking up bowls, start with paper bowls, all right? You can stack them on top of the others, okay? So just stacking like that or putting it over each other again like that, okay? So, or you can also use a paper plate. This. Take your time. Okay, this will be for the more advanced activity, okay? Now for dressing, you should be able to pick up your clothes or your shirts. So practice picking up washcloths first, okay? Or if you have laundry, you have, you're just done with doing your laundry, you can practice folding the clothes. Or you can also just practice picking it up and putting it aside like that. Or you can also practice folding your washcloths. All right, so folding, it will improve your ability to turn your arm 
over and some motor control there okay so a lot of activities you can do at home in between your therapy sessions if you have therapy sessions for outpatient so that is constraint induced movement therapy trust me this will really supercharge your stroke recovery again you need to meet the criteria you need to be able to extend your wrist 10 degrees your fingers 10 degrees okay and your thumb 10 degrees so you need to have that fine motor movement okay and you should also be able to pick up a tissue paper or a washcloth and let it go so you need to pick it up and put it back down right and you also need to be motivated all right so if you don't meet the criteria yet i have a few other exercises just find your stage of your stroke recovery click on that video and do those therapy exercises that i am going to show you there so just click in this link okay so again a reminder consistency is the key and never give up okay until next time palam